Okay, this is part two of the MAPS lecture, lecture five, and we're going to start off with azimuthal projections. Azimuthal are characterized by straight or curved meridians and curved parallels. The meridians radiate from the poles in azimuthal projections regardless of what type. Parallels can be equally spaced but aren't always, and the simplest azimuthal is a tangential, orthogonal, or orthographic projection. These are adequate for very small areas, and the scale and area distortion increases as the distance from the tangent center increases. The azimuthal equidistant is used to show air route distances. Distances from the center are true, and distortion radiates out from the center of the map as it does with all azimuthal projections. The Lambert azimuthal equidistant area is used to map large ocean areas. So if you were working for the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, you would use one of these. Central meridians are straight lines and the others are curved. Some of the miscellaneous projections um, include other systems that contain unprojected data or don't fit into one of the previous three categories. These can include the space oblique mercator, the sinusoidal, and the good. The space oblique mercator is using a combination of space photographs with the way the Earth is shaped based on, on the way it looks from space and um, the mercator projections that we already use. And you can see here um, that it looks a lot more realistic than most maps do. However, we've obviously only had these since the late 60s, um, early 70s. The sinusoidal um, has a very distinct shape, and you can recognize this type of map just by the shape of the way the map is projected, because it's trying to take that sphere and cut it into portions so that you can see more of the way the world actually looks. And the good is another type of projection. It's trying to combine a bunch of different types of projections. It looks kind of like a sinusoidal with less breakups in it. All of these systems, remember we have a, a universal absolute location, the latitude and longitude. This is considered a coordinate system. This is a system to represent points, um, lines, polygons, other landscape features in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space. And the points are located in reference to a previously predetermined set of intersecting lines. The coordinate systems were in, in um, introduced by Rene Descartes, who was um, born in 1596 and died in 1650. It was based on right angle geometry, and actually his Cartesian system is what we use for generic graphing. So all of the algebra stuff that you do, where you're doing the slope intercept form and you're graphing the little line, the, the Cartesian coordinates are actually based on his work. Um, some types of coordinate systems include the latitude and longitude, universal transverse Mercator maps, the state plane system, the meets and bounds system, public land survey system, and location specific systems. The latitude and longitude system I've been talking about, and these are the most commonly used coordinate systems. The scale, shape, and direction distortion all increase with increasing area of interest. So if you're looking at a small system, it works really well. If you're looking at the whole planet, not so much. The state plane system um, treats small portions of the Earth as flat surfaces. The state plane system consists of 111 separate zones within the United States itself. The origin of each coordinate system is always the southwest corner of the zone to avoid the use of negative coordinates. Units are a measure of feet, so they use the imper imperial system rather than the metric system. And the advantage of the state plane system is that only a small amount of distortion happens due to a projection of area onto a plane because it's a relatively smaller section. The disadvantage is that there's a large number of zones. There's 111 zones, and there's no way to convert measurements between zones. So it's only relative within a particular zone. The number of zones in a state is usually determined by the, the areas that the state covers and ranges from 1, in Montana, for example, to as many as 10 in Alaska. Each zone has a unique central meridian. 
Idaho, for example, uses a transverse Mercator projection and is divided into three zones, east, central, and west. The Idaho Z east zone, which is um, plain system 1101, includes these counties. Bannock, Bear Lake, Bingham, Bonneville, Caribou, Clark, Franklin, Fremont, Jefferson, Madison, Oneida, Power, Teton. The Idaho Central Zone, 1102, includes these counties. Blaine, Butte, Camas, Cassia, Custer, Gooding, Jerome, Lemhi, Lincoln, Minidoka, and Twin Falls. And finally, the West Zone includes Ada, Adams, Benawa, Boise, Bonner, Boundary, Canyon, Clearwater, Elmore, Gem, Idaho, Kootenai, Leita, Lewis, Nez Perce, Owyhee, Payette, Shoshone Valley and Washington and if I mispronounce the name of your county I apologize I am from Florida so you know bear with me I'm trying the best I can to accommodate the meets and bounds systems um, began in the eastern United States back in the colonial times um, this was when the eastern U.S. was subdivided and transferred from private uh, public ownership to private ownership before the public land survey was initiated in 1785. So really only the colonial era, um, pretty much right before the Revolutionary War, is really where you see the meets and bounds system. So those of you who are history buffs and you're looking at, you know, colonial plantations or um, pre-revolutionary plantations or things like that, you're going to be looking at meets and bounds. A meet means the act of measuring, um, metering, and assigning by measure, although the units are usually in feet, um, although you can see chains here on this example. A bound refers to the property, property boundaries and may consist of measurements, angles and distances, or simply by descriptions. And partials are usually shaped ha ha haphazardly, usually due to the um, area that it's actually sitting in. And so you can see here there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this one meet and bound. This is one piece of property that they're talking about. And you can see that, you know, there's an ash stump and a beech tree and a walnut and things like that. These aren't really necessarily applicable today because those things might not be there today, but it worked for the pre-colonial times. In 1785, the General Land Office established the Public Land Survey. The intent was to establish perfect townships of exactly six miles to a side, or 36 square miles, and each was to be sub subdivided into square sections of 640 acres, which equals one square mile. The curvature of the earth prevents a perfect subdivision of land under this system in addition to other factors, but most of the Midwest and Western United States has been surveyed using this system. This picture is of the original public land survey map of a place called Mill Creek near the Idaho, Oregon, and Washington borders. There's a huge description that goes with this, and I'm not going to read that out to you because it's ridiculous, um, but this was um, referenced originally to set up the townships. It's still a coordinate system and it also allows towns to kind of be a regular um, pattern. People talk about um, certain kinds of towns being set up on a grid system and the public land survey is the primary reason behind that. Okay, that concludes uh, the second part of Lecture 5, which is latitude, longitudes, and the types of map projections. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, of course, see me during office hours, email me, call me, whatever you need to do. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.